everybody, it's Ann from Superstitched. I'm back with some tips and tricks. Today we're going to talk about blind hemming. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate a couple different um, scenarios. So whether you're short like me and you have to hem everything, or you've got friends that discovered you have a sewing machine, they're asking you to hem their pants, their skirts, whatever. We're going to talk about some different challenges that you'll run into when you're doing some blind hems. So we'll talk about preparing and marking your garment for the hem, and then we'll talk about the feet itself and how to make adjustments on your sewing machine. So a couple of the techniques we'll talk about is um, just doing some regular dress slacks. Um, and some challenges you might face when you're doing some tapered pants. And also another uh, example that we'll talk about is a full skirt, how to adjust for your blind hem for that. So let's get started. So we'll talk about blind hem feet. Most machines will have some sort of a blind stitch available and there's different variations of different blind hem feet. Uh, this is the Janome blind hem foot that I'm going to be using on my Skyline S9. And this has a preset guide here that I'm going to line up my fold that we're going to demonstrate. And you can see that this is going to hold that fold for you and line up the stitch when we go to do the blind stitch itself. Um, so this has a stationary guide. You might have a foot that has an adjustable guide. So if you can't adjust the width of your stitch, you might be able to adjust the guide. And you'll see this has an adjustable guide. This one also has an adjustable guide. So depending on what foot you have, you're either going to adjust the foot or you're going to adjust the stitch, as we'll show you. I'm going to show not only how to do a blind hem, but also some scenarios on how to mark and prepare to do the blind hem. Uh, the first example I'm going to do is some slacks, either men's slacks or ladies slacks. Um, so what you want to do is you want to lay them all out. You want to have the waistband even up here and smooth them all out so that we can mark both legs at once. If the pants you're hemming were previously done on a commercial blind stitcher, this is how you're gonna pull it out. You wanna look for the beginning of it. And here, so here's like a little tail that was the beginning of the blind stitch. And what you wanna do is find that and you're gonna pull out so that you're gonna get the thread so that it's just coming out of the first loop and this is, um, you always work left to right. And then you just pull this. So once I've got that pulled, then I can just simply pull and the whole thing's gonna pull out. This, this stitch was done on a commercial blind stitcher. So if you're re-hemming a pair of pants that were done commercially, this is how you're gonna remove that hem. Now when marking the pants, um, if you're trying them on, Usually on men's slacks, you're going to have them put a mark where they break on the front of the shoe. And then the back, you would mark at the, um, where just above the heel. So I like to use Taylor's chalk, and this is just going to iron off. So I have it marked here. Now, quite often on men's slacks, you might have a little bit of an angle so that they break on the front. So I'm going to show you a trick to help do that. So I'm just going to draw a line from front to back, my front marking to my back marking. Now I'm going to just simply transfer that mark to my other layers. Now this is assuming that the legs are even. Sometimes they're not if you know your customer or whatever has um, an uneven hip or something, you might need to mark both legs. But in this case, I'm making them even. So then I'm just going to unfold and I'm gonna transfer those markings. I've transferred the markings, and now I'm just gonna unfold, and I'm gonna draw that line here, and here, and here, so I've got both legs marked on both sides. So then I can open this up. I have removed the original blind hem, and I'm gonna press that out. So once I've got all four layers marked, now I'm simply gonna come down. On men's slacks, usually two inches. Ladies, maybe just like an inch, inch and a half. And I'm gonna draw a line. Now you could cut this, you could put it on, you could serge this if you have a serger, or you can simply just use some um, pinking shears 
So I'm going to go ahead and transfer that mark to my other pant or my other leg. And then I can just simply cut them off with pinking shears. The pinking shears are going to keep it from uh, raveling. So it's just a quicker way to do a quick hem just to pink it rather than serging and overcasting. So any one of those options you want to do so that your, um, your raw edge is not going to ravel. Now a little tip here, especially on men's slacks, um, especially if you did angle that a little bit, I like to just take a little snip right at that front crease. And then when we show the blind hem, you'll see how that just allows that to open up right across the crease so you don't get a pucker on that front crease. So I'm going to do a little snip on the front creases. And then all I do is I'm going to grab at my mark at each inseam and out seam. So I'm going to grab the fabric and I just snap it like so. And then I grab at the two creases, the front and the back. And now I'm ready to press. Now, depending on your fabric uh, and your iron, whatever type of iron you have and the type of fabric, you may want to use a press cloth, so you might want to test to see if you get any um, iron shine on the fabric. I've got a Teflon coated iron here, so I'm okay there, but you might want to use a press cloth when you do this. So again, I'm just going to fold back on the seam, fold back on the seam, I just pull grab my crease, grab my crease, pull, give that a press, and then I'm ready to go to my machine. Today I'm on my Skyline S9 and I'm just going to go to my sewing applications page and I can select blind hem. And then this is going to show me I have two different selections here. Now most machines again will either have, uh, will have these stitches. The woven blind hem you'll see has straight stitches and then it jumps over. The stretch or knit blind hem is going to have two or a couple little small zigzags and then one more bite where it's going to jump over. So depending on whether you're doing woven or knit, you can select that stitch. Now when I select the stitch, um, the different adjustments that you have include the width so most machines will be able to adjust your width. That's going to be the amount, or the, the size of the jump that it's going to catch. And this is where you want to make sure that when we demonstrate the blind hem itself, you'll see when that needle jumps over, that's how wide it's jumping over. So if you're catching too much of the fold, you could adjust this. And so it's going to catch less. This is going to be where that um, needle is going to jump over. Now, not all machines will have this, but that's going to be where the straight stitch lines up on the other part of your, the extension of your fab, uh, before you have the fold. This again is going to be my needle drop position. The next is your stitch length. Now, the, most machines default to about a two. I personally like to have a longer distance between the jumps. So you'll see as I increase that, I'm usually about a three. So you'll see there'll be more distance before it jumps over to catch my fold. And then um, usually a basic um, default tension and default pressure are going to be good and you could adjust those depending if you've got a stretchy fabric you might want to decrease your pressure. So the most important thing you're going to be looking at again is going to be the stitch width. That's what you're going to make sure when we demonstrate the stitch itself this determines where that needle drops to how much part of that fold it's catching. You want to achieve just catching a thread of the fold. Now once I've marked and pressed up my hem, I turned the whole pant leg inside out. So now I'm looking at my hem that has been pressed and cut, and I'm going to take the hem, I'm going to grab and fold it back towards the front of the garment so that it is just extending. So 
So I've got my finished edge, however I finish that, just extending with the fold. So again, the pant hem has been folded back to the right side of the garment. If I'm doing a pant leg, I'm gonna use my free arm and I'm gonna just bring it right around the free arm and line up the fold right along the guide of the foot. What you want to do is get the needle so that it is just piercing just a thread of the fold. So you can adjust the width like we're gonna show you or you can adjust your foot if you're using a different type of foot. You want that needle to just barely catch a thread of that fold. So as the stitch comes around, it's just jumping over and catching just a thread of that fold. I'm using white thread so you can see. I want it to just barely catch that thread. So I'm now stitching across the front crease where I made that little snip. So you'll see how that allows that to just open up so that we don't get a pucker at that front crease. You can just barely see those stitches here. And of course, if I had used matching thread, which you would, you would barely see this. So on a domestic sewing machine with the stitch, it's, your goal is to just barely catch a thread of the fold. Now, a commercial blind stitcher obviously um, just barely catches that and doesn't show at all. But on, a commercial, on your domestic sewing machine, you can achieve a pretty close look too. The key, key is to just barely catch one thread of that fold. Another challenge that you might run into in, before you do the blind hem is if you're trying to hem a pair of very tapered pants. You can see these pants are wider and then they taper right in. So when you go to shorten them, you end up with a bit of a challenge. So I've prepared a little example where I'm gonna show you how you're going to adjust the leg before you do the blind stitch. So when I have a pair of tapered pants, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the hem up and I'm going to put a mark at where that stitching needs to be, where the top of that hem is going to be. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna measure from seam to seam at the bottom in this is six and a half inches. However, from here to here, this is now seven and a half inches. So there is no way that I'm gonna be able to fold that hem up and have it fit because I've got an inch difference. So I need to compensate for that. So I can either let this seam out a little bit or take this seam in. So I might just do a little bit of both. I know that I'm a, um, I need to compensate for an inch. So I'm gonna take about a quarter inch from here, I'm gonna let out, and I'm gonna come in about a quarter inch here, and then I'll just simply taper that into the rest of my seam. So again, I'm gonna let out about a quarter inch here. I'm gonna come in about a quarter inch here. And then I'll angle that into the seam. So I'll go stitch that so you'll be able to see how that seam is able to fit in now. So I stitched, I stitched on my line where I let out it, I let it out at the bottom and I tapered it into where I need it to line up, and then I tapered this back into the original seam. So I basically have a straight line from the bottom of my hem to the top of where that hem needs to get stitched. So then we remove the original stitching, and then you could just trim off any excess here. Again, you could, you could serge that off. or in some cases you can leave it. But now you'll be able to see when I fold that hem up, now it's going to fit. You can see I've opened that up here. So now when I go to do my blind stitch, this where I fold the hem up is going to fit here. 
and now I'm able to go to the machine and do the blind stitch. Otherwise, this would not have fit. So again, the raw edge, need where however it folds up, needs to be the same width as where it's going to get stitched on to the upper part of the pant. Another challenge that you'll run into before you do a blind hem is if you're doing like a full circle type skirt. When you go to turn the hem up, you've got more fabric than you need. And what do you do with that extra fabric? So we're gonna show you a couple of tips and tricks for that. Okay, so what I've marked and pressed up a hem on a full skirt here. So you can see my problem is that now I have more fabric than I need to hem. So just the opposite of the tapered pant is I now, as I fold up my hem, I've got a more fabric than what I'm attaching it to. So we're gonna um, show you two options, one on the serger and one on the sewing machine to adjust for that fullness so that you don't end up with a bunch of just tip or a bunch of tucks in here. So basically I need to um, adjust, ease in that fullness so that the hem lays flat. So if you have a serger, all you need to do really is just do an over edge, but just by turning that differential feed up a little bit. And what that's going to do is just ease in the fullness. So I'm just over edging and just kind of shaving off the edge but as I go, you'll see that it's just kind of drawing in that edge a little bit. Do you see how it's just easing in that fullness and how that's going to allow that hem to now lay nice and flat when I go to the blind stitcher? Now, if you don't have a serger, just an easy way to ease in fullness is to just do a stitch, but hold your finger behind the foot as you're stitching. And what that's going to do is just ease in fullness. So you can use this for all kinds of techniques, but especially if you're preparing to do a blind hem where you need to ease in some fullness. Again, you can see how that just eased in that little bit of fullness. So then, and I would probably overcast that as well, but just ease in that fullness. So now the blind hem is going to lay flat. So I hope I've been able to give you some tips and tricks for achieving a perfect blind hem. Whether you're doing a tapered pant, a full skirt, uh, men's slacks, there's always little tips and tricks for achieving not only the blind hem itself, but in preparing the garment to get your blind hem. So again, if you have any questions, just um, let us know and watch for more tips and tricks. Be sure to subscribe, click on the bell, you'll be notified when we upload new videos.